Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr. And what do you think about your benefits at work? Yeah, 401k, vacation. It's our topic today, and uh, you might be surprised by what we're going to learn as we talk with Kelsey Sheehy. Now, Kelsey is a small business expert with Nerd Wallet, and Kelsey, so happy to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Terry. Okay, so I mentioned 401k and vacation. And I guess when you look at a job or when you're already at a job, those are some of the typical benefits. Um, why should we be thinking that's maybe not enough anymore? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think health insurance, paid vacation, sick leave, retirement tools, these really should be the baseline, not the bar for employer provided benefits. Employees really want benefits that meet their needs, not the needs of a previous generation. And, you know, the current standard for benefits just doesn't fully reflect a workforce that has exponentially more student debt than previous generations mm. that really values balance, flexibility, mental health and wellness, and that understands that there are many, that families come in many forms and that there are many paths to creating a family. So, you know, we saw these trends prior to the pandemic, but I think COVID really amplified this desire for a new normal. That's really interesting. So I'm hearing you talk about a couple of different things there that maybe moving forward, we could consider as benefits, but again, not extra. They should just be included. Yeah. So what are we talking about when, you, when you're talking about some of these new ideas as far as benefits go? Yeah. Well, I think benefits that reflect the times and reflect this generation include remote work, tuition stipends and student loan assistance, uh, mental health resources and other wellness benefits. But on top of that, I think this generation really wants benefits that are inclusive, that fit all types of employees, not just one type of employee. Yeah. I, I know there are some others on the list that you recently put together. I'm just going to kind of go through it one by one. And it'll be interesting because as you and I are talking about it, listeners will probably be thinking, what? Oh my gosh, I could ask for that. And yeah. I guess that's what we hope everybody can learn from this. So flexibility, what do you mean by just being flexible? Well, I think flexibility comes in many forms. So I think the last year and a half has really shown us the value of remote work and being able to work outside of an office. And we've heard anecdotally and also seen a lot of studies that people really value that and to the extent that they're willing to leave their job if that no longer becomes an option for them. So, you know, we've also seen employers say, no, this doesn't work for our business but it has worked for their business for the last year and a half. So it's right. harder to make that case. And it's easier for employees to say, look how well I've done working remotely for the last year and a half under less than ideal circumstances. You know, can I still do this two or three days a week? It doesn't have to be an either or an all or nothing situation. Well, you know, I love that one. So I'm putting flexibility on my own list. <laughs> so there we go. Um, you mentioned student loans early in our conversation, mm -hmm. but how does that get included um, when you maybe want to think about it as some sort of benefit? Yeah, so there are two ways this could come into play in terms of employee benefits. One is tuition assistance, helping your employees who want to further their education do so without taking on a huge financial burden. This can really be a win-win for employees and employers because you're helping your employees learn new skills, maybe learn management skills, and you're showing them that you value them. You're taking some financial stress off of them, and you're making a really tangible investment and their development. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I also really like this one, pet insurance. How yeah. does this work? <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as an avid dog owner, I also love this one. Yeah. You know, pet insurance is kind of one of those fun ones that maybe isn't going to be a huge investment for employees to add. You know, it's not going to be heavily subsidized, yeah. but it gives your employees the option, maybe a small discount on that. And it shows 
that you care about what's important to them. You know, you care about their fur family as well as their human family. And it's, you know, makes, makes their lives a little bit easier. This is, you know, especially going to come into play over the, you know, pre excuse me, especially going to come into play post pandemic when you're asking employees to come back into the office and leave their pandemic puppies at home for the first time. So it's just an extra way to say, you know, we care about you and we care about what you care about. I love that. And, and we know we've seen so many adoptions of animals during the pandemic. So I can only imagine, how about one more benefit with pet insurance? You can bring your pet to work too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, I would this, love it. This is a great one, but it doesn't work in all situations. Right. But, you know, it's always worth asking your employer about. And I think that's kind of one of the key takeaways is it doesn't hurt to ask here. Oh, my gosh. OK, what if we want to try and ask about um, fertility benefits? What it's could this be surrounding? One. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great point. And I think when fertility benefits is really something that no one thinks about until they need it. And then they discover their health insurance doesn't cover it. Mm -hmm. Very few states actually require fertility benefits to be included in health insurance plans, employer provided health insurance plans. And even those that do include it, maybe only come up cover a fraction of this. So that's something to look at. Look at your employer look at your health insurance plan. Does it include benefits? Does it include enough benefits to actually get you through the fertility process? And if not, ask your employer, but also look at your partner's employer. What does their insurance offer? Know that you have options in terms of how to layer that coverage. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a fair question to ask, does your employer's health insurance plan cover male infertility? and female infertility. That's kind of where we get to those inclusive benefits. Are we offering the same coverage for everybody? Yeah. Talking about inclusive, what else could that actually mean when you're talking about inclusive benefits? Yeah. So one, another way that that plays out would be in parental leave, for example, mm. uh, do adopted parents or surrogate parents get the same level of parental leave as a birth mother? Oh, do, you know, yeah. birth partners get the same level of leave as a birth mother? So that's another way to look at your benefits and really evaluate whether they are inclusive and embracing your entire workforce. And that's a way to signal to employees as well that, you know, even if they're not going to directly benefit from this thing, that it tells them their values are aligned with you. It's a way to put your mission statement really into action. No kidding. Okay. So we've got starting with the inclusive benefits, you know, something to do with maybe student loan repayment or stipends, pet insurance, fertility benefits, flexibility. Yeah. So here we go, Kelsey. The biggest question is, how do you ask for these things? If you're the employee, what do you do? Yeah. Well, the approach is everything, right? So yeah. The big thing here is come armed with data, really be prepared to make a business case for what you're asking for. Say you want your employer to consider adding student loan repayment assistance, point out the fact that 34% of employees said they'd be more likely to stay at their job if their employers offered this benefit. <laughs> Better yet, find out if one of their competitors offers it and make that use that to make your case. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other tips for the employees? I, I suppose the biggest thing is not to be afraid to ask. Yes. You're mm -hmm. not going to get anything that you don't ask for. And your employer may not even know that this is something that their workforce wants. So definitely don't be afraid to ask, but also don't be afraid to hear no, because that's you know, it's likely going to happen, especially the first time around. So it's important to understand the reason behind that. Now, is it budget? Is it a timing issue? Is it simply a demand issue? And use that to inform your next steps. If your employer doesn't think there's enough demand for what you're asking for, hmm. do a survey of your, of your coworkers and bring that to them the next time around. You may find out that they're right, that there isn't a huge demand for it. And so you wait and you build your case until there is, you build your case when there is. Oh, what great ideas. Now on the flip side, why should an employer actually listen to this and consider this when an employee or a bunch of employees do come and ask for it? 
That is such a good question. I think now more than ever, employers are keenly aware of the fact that their workers have choices. A lot of employers are struggling to hire right now. They have open headcount. And so keeping the people that they have is so important. And letting your employees know that they're heard, that they're valued is key to keeping them in the door. We also know that hiring new employees is far more expensive than keeping the ones that you have. So those are a couple of reasons why employers should hear their people out. What do we take away? What what is the biggest thing that um, either side, employees or employers, can be thinking about when they're thinking about additional benefits? And again, when we started our conversation, we started with the typical (laughs) vacation and 401k, but why do these other things matter? And and what could we learn from all of this, Kelsey? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a couple of takeaways here. You know, when you talk about why this matters, we know that things like financial stress and emotional stress can really affect an employee's productivity at work. So that's a benefit for that's a reason for employers to consider these asks when when they when they come to them. You know, it's not just something frivolous. It's something that can really help your bottom line and help your employees perform better. Yeah. Um, but from the employee side, it doesn't hurt to ask. You know, I don't think a lot of us have ever considered even asking for more than what's available, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And there are some really thoughtful ways to go about doing so. Um, you know, bring your data. Be prepared for the no. And if you get that no, find out, you know, can you get a seat at the table? Can you be part of the decision-making process the next time around? If there's not an employee resource group or a committee that helps inform these decisions, volunteer to start one and recruit, you know, a diverse group of employees to get on board with you. And that shows your employer that you're interested in more than just some one-off thing that will benefit you, that you're really interested in, in improving the workplace as a whole. And it's time, isn't it? It is time. And, you know, <laughs> on the on the employer side, I think a big takeaway here that we haven't talked about is don't wait for your employees to come to you. Ah. If you do an annual survey, ask about employee benefits. If you're not doing that in your annual survey, that's really a missed opportunity to find out yeah. what your employees want. Well, Kelsey, you know, I love this topic. And uh, excited to put some of these things into play. And I hope everybody who's listening will do the same. It's a whole new world out there after this last year. And these are just incredible tips. So Kelsey, thank you so much for being here with this. Thank you, Terry. It's my pleasure. Oh my gosh, mine too. <laughs> Kelsey Sheehy, she is the small business expert with Nerd Wallet. We're talking about how to boost your benefits beyond what I guess we do call the, the typical expected. All right. Thank you for listening to another Pennywise podcast. And don't forget, all of those are um, stacked up so you can listen to them anytime you want. Find them wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Kelsey, thanks again. And goodbye, everybody. Thanks for being here with us.